Hello and welcome back. I'll be sampling some soft glass today and making a few glass artifacts as well here on the Matt Yasa channel. And so I'll start off with my mini oil lamp, the glass candle, and show you the colored rods and some clear rods that I'll be using, which are a Freddy. It comes from the city of Murano, which is very well known for their traditional glass working. So you might have noticed the end of the rod started to pop and kind of explode off in the flame. That's because the soft glass, also known as soda lime glass, is less heat resistant compared to borosilicate, which is what I normally use for my projects. And so it's good to warm the rods up a little more slowly to prevent that popping or cracking. And you can do that by starting a little farther back in the flame, or another good method is to swipe it in and out of the flame very quickly until it warms up. Once it's warmed up though, you should be good to go. But then again, this is my first attempt with soda lime, so I'm not entirely sure of all the ways it wants to react. I do know it's gonna be very similar to borosilicate, however, it has a lower melting point. And so I've noticed it's melting a bit quicker and moving around a little more easily. But it's kind of gotten away from me here and turning into a teardrop. I was going for more of a marble. So that was the basics of marble making before it turned into a teardrop. It is taking a rod, holding it sideways in the flame, and rotating it over and over as it gathers up into a sphere. As it gathers larger and gets heavier, it becomes harder to support the weight of the sphere off the rod. So I'm going to try a different method here and connect up with the clear rod and gather between the two. It can also help to use a larger rod for the bigger marbles and lenses. I'll use a 28 millimeter rod. And for the recent chess set, I had to use a 16 millimeter to get the right size foot. And most of the colored rods will be somewhere around seven millimeters in diameter. So it's good to have some seven millimeter clear rods as well. Now that I have a good base heat in the glass, you'll see how quickly it gathers up into a larger sphere. I'm still being a little bit careful as I'm not as familiar with the soda lime glass and how much heat it can take. I know it does have a high coefficient of expansion, a 104 compared to borosilicate, which is 33. The coefficient of expansion describes how much a material will end up expanding or contracting due to heat or thermal energy. And so one of the consequences is that you can't really use two different types of glass that expand at different rates together. So boro and soda lime aren't compatible together. When you have both in your shop, you wanna make extra caution to separate the two. And so the soda lime wants to undergo a volumetric change a little more rapidly when heated and cooled, which ends up making it a bit more self-destructive. The cooling phase can be especially worse as the outside layers of glass begin to rapidly cool and contract. The inside layers, or the center of this marble, for instance, is still hot and will repel that force, which can lead to some explosive cracking. And so I was trying to think of a good artistic representation of that, something that you might be more familiar with. 
And the best thing that I can think is a line of gears. You know, gears all interconnected, all of them kind of moving and transferring that movement one to the other. And the centermost gear would be the center layer of glass or the center of the marble. And so if that one is still hot and moving pretty fast while the other ones next to it are slowing down, then it's going to run into some trouble. And so you got to make sure to keep reheating your work. You can't let those outside layers cool down too much. And also when you do let everything cool down, to do it very slowly over a long period of time. It will also depend on how thick the glass is and what type of glass. For any kind of thermal applications, like distilling water and such, I always recommend borosilicate. But even borosilicate can crack in the most extreme conditions. Your most resistant glass would be quartz. It has an extremely low coefficient of expansion. I think somewhere around one. However, it's incredibly hard to work. It takes a lot of heat to melt and I can only move it around while inside of the flame. Compared to borosilicate, which I pull out of the flame for a few seconds to work on, and this soda lime, even longer than that. I kind of see it as a bit of a spectrum where quartz would be at the very top, the hardest to work, the most heat. Then bora would be a little bit below that. Soda lime a little bit below that one. And then very far down, you would find at the bottom, Jolly Ranchers <laughs> or Candy Glass. And this marble is looking pretty good. The next step would be a marble mold to really finalize the shape. But even without that step, it looks like a pretty good marble. I'm having some trouble with my cold punty, it seems. It's completely melted in. I'll have to get used to that lower melting point a little bit. So I'll finish up those last marks and put it in the kiln for a slightly lower temperature for soda lime, which is 960 Fahrenheit or 515 Celsius. And so I'm going to go ahead and begin on another marble here. I'm going to try to incorporate all the colors I have, which isn't much. I bought a few pounds on sale, but I plan to melt down and recycle some ordinary glass, such as bottles, drinking glasses, maybe a broken window. And so for the next video, I'm going to attempt to melt down an old ashtray. I'm going to melt it and then pull it out into rods, similar to what I'm using here. And so make sure to hit that subscribe button. That way you don't miss out on the next video. Speaking of subscribers, there's been quite a few since my last episode, the Iron Golem. And so I want to thank you for joining me along here in this adventure. And welcome to the channel. And now I do know I throw up this welcome sign quite often. But I think that's important to make people feel welcome, kind of included in the festivities. But beyond just being welcome, I think there's more that a person needs. And that would not just be a place, but a purpose. And so if you're looking for something to do, I highly recommend the arts and crafts. Not just lamp working, but any kind of creative art in general, from drawing to painting to making music. And in the end, it's less about comparing yourself or your work to other people and more about exploring what you can do and then attempting to bring that experience back and translate it for other people to enjoy. 
But now if you are planning to get into lamp working, then look no further. This is a place for you. I'll do my best to answer your glass related questions along with taking your suggestions for future videos. And one question that I get quite often is which torch should I buy to start lamp working? And that might depend on a couple of factors. First, if you have a very tight budget, then I would stick with a cheaper $200 entry torch, such as the GTT Bobcat or the Bethlehem Alpha. These smaller torches should still allow you to practice mostly all the techniques. However, what you create is gonna be of a smaller size. And so after a year of practice on that smaller torch and saving up for more equipment, you'll be ready to go for a bigger burner. But then the next question I normally ask besides budget would be how are you getting your oxygen? Either through cylinders, which you rent and pay per refill, or an oxygen concentrator, which you generate the oxygen yourself. For cylinders, a higher pressure torch like a GTT might be a good option. But for oxygen concentrators, I do prefer the Bethlehem burners. The oxygen ports are just a little bit larger, which should help facilitate that lower pressure from the concentrator. And now with all of that said, I do feel like they're simply tools. You know, it's up to the artists themselves, it's up to your hands to get the most out of what the tool has to offer. And now my hands have been busy with this marble. I've gotten it all put together. I'm just trying to finish up the shaping now. I've rounded out both sides and I turned it 90 degrees to work on a separate axis. And then I'll round it out on both sides again to get it about to 95% the way there. It does take a bit of practice to get it as close as you can. Without a marble mold, it's probably still gonna be a little bit oblong here or there, but it'll look pretty good. And just as a reminder that this whole video has been done with soft glass or soda lime. All my other videos are borosilicate. That's often one of the most asked questions is what glass am I using? Another question I do get from time to time is if I'd be willing to conduct private lessons or online personal lessons. And I appreciate that you're interested in me to be a personal instructor, but for me, I feel a little bit more in place here with this open format. Education and information is very important to me. I feel it's good to keep it open to the public. You know, those that are willing to spend their time, those that are really dedicated wanting to learn and improve themselves, shouldn't have to pay an extra price, monetarily speaking. And so I'll finish up on this last punty mark, throw it in the kiln, and begin on the next and last project, a small magnifying glass. So I haven't made a magnifying glass in quite a while, about two years ago. The concept is very similar to the marble. I'm gonna start off by gathering up a nice sphere of glass, but then at some point I'll begin to flatten it out to make more of a lens. And now a normal round marble is naturally a lens already. The curvature of the surface will bend the light and magnify or focus the image. And so as I mentioned before, I'll normally start off with the larger rod, like a 28 or 30 millimeter, and use a very high quality glass like Cymax. 
And so, unfortunately, this uh, Freddy isn't the clearest glass. It's not really intended for laboratory use. But it is quite affordable. It looks like I trapped a wisp of smoke inside of the marble. I might have forgotten to clean up the end of the rod. And it's always good to pull a little bit of the end off, especially if it's rough cut. The jagged edges will kind of bubble up in the glass. But I'll just go ahead and keep going. I'm going to apply a very high heat and then hold it upright and allow gravity to start slumping it back down. And it's kind of surprising to me how quickly it just went from a marble to a disc. It didn't seem to take as much heat as the Boro. And now I'm going to go ahead and punty up to the face and take off the back rod. And so if you're setting up a new studio, this is a perfect project to practice. Of course, don't forget your safety equipment, your eye protection, the flashback arrester, a good ventilation to pull the fumes outside. And now I'll go ahead and finish rounding off the other side. I normally flatten one side, but I don't think that'll be necessary. If I can avoid contacting any surfaces, that'll help from picking up any contaminants, which can cause some imperfections in the image. And now to attach the blue handle, I'll heat both areas very hot and molten and attach it in the flame. This will get a very solid seal, a very solid connection. I'll go ahead and flame cut a few inches down. I need to make the handle proportional to the lens, so it has to be small also. But I'll gather a little marble at the end. It's good to get the basic shape down before you come back later and make it a bit more fancy. But the sky is the limit with this craft. You know, you can take any project as far as your imagination can go. But I think we've gone as far as this episode's going to take us for today. I'm just rewarming the project. I'm going to tap it off my cold punty, finish that last mark, and get it in the kiln. And so let's go ahead and check out all this work. First up will be the magnifying glass. Here's a 25 cent coin. It seems to be working. It's magnifying the image quite well. And as we roll on to the marbles, this will complete our exploration in soft glass for today. I want to thank you for joining me here. And also remember to subscribe so you don't miss the next video where I'll attempt to recycle an old glass ashtray here on the Matt Yasa channel.